Good day, fellow learners. This is your mentor, your Fatshek Badiri Gapus, joining you for another learning and teaching session. This is actually our pointer set number 34. And you are absolutely right. If you have noticed our logo, we're now celebrating our 30 years in our test preparations provision to US Dreamers. So I've taught hundreds of thousands of nurses from around the world. And we are now serving nurses from 33 countries. You heard it right. We are serving nurses across the globe. Now, for this session, I'd like to highlight the things that you will need to be updated on, specifically on the area of psychosocial integrity. Okay? So, but before we move forward, let me first congratulate Maria Frances de Marino, St. Jude College, Manila, for passing the New Mexico State Board of Nursing Next Generation NCLEX IM test last November 21, 2023. And this is her advice to everyone. When the time is right, I, the Lord, will make it happen. I took my NCLEX exam on November 22, 2023, and my computer shut down at 150. So she maxed out. It doesn't matter. I have doubts that maybe I did not pass, but the next day I get an email from New Mexico Board of Nursing that I pass. I'm feeling grateful and blessed for the good news, despite the fact that I'm facing so many problems before the exam. I would like to extend my gratitude to the Ray A. Gapos Review System, to Sir Ray and the whole team for all the help to achieve my American dream. This, their concept, quick fix and books. Okay, so we have our nursing reminder sheet, pharmacology, this is your NRS. This is the pharma book. This is NCLEX 311, the holy grail of passing the NGN, which is the local edition of my internationally published book, NCLEX RN in a flash. Okay. These are very useful to me. Kudos to the whole team and God bless. May you continue to be the instrument and blessing to those aspiring USRNs. Lastly, Thank you, God, for the strength and wisdom during my exam. Indeed, God has perfect timing, never early and never late. It takes a little patience and faith, but it's all always worth the wait. And to my very supportive family and friends, thank you for all your prayers. This is it. So congratulations, Maria Frances T. Marino. You made it. Okay. Now, when you're preparing for the NGM, it's important to ask this question, what do I need to study? And in this session, let me highlight these things. Okay, first one is actually your PICS disease. So PICS disease is also known as your frontotemporal dementia. So frontal lobe as well as the temporal lobe would be affected. So remember, the frontal lobe is responsible for personality. It's responsible for problem solving and your left frontal lobe is responsible for your speech okay your temporal lobe is responsible for memory and hearing so you can just imagine that when these parts of the brain are affected so your executive functions like planning problem solving and personality would be affected that's why functional concept Initial manifestation of a client with Pick's disease or frontotemporal dementia is personality changes. Remember, P, frontal lobe, personality changes associate the two. Okay, so it's slightly more common in women, and in some cases, it has the potential to run in families. So, which means this could be familiar. Now, there is familial, there is no cure, but medications could be used in order to treat the depression that comes with it, as well as the aggressive behavior. So some of these clients, when they get disoriented, they could be throwing things and pushing people around them, okay? So pay particular attention to the fact that these behavioral concerns are part and parcel of their problems in terms of the dementia that they are suffering, okay? So what should be our priority intervention for a patient with PICS disease? Um, the priority intervention definitely is to orient the patient frequently, monitor their behavioral um, disturbances, 
and provide assistance when necessary, especially if they are manifesting impaired balance and gait. Okay? They may potentially manifest the signs and symptoms that could also be seen in a patient with Parkinson's disease. So if you have a patient who's manifesting symptoms of Parkinson's disease plus cognitive impairment, you might want to consider frontotemporal dementia or Tick's disease. And since eventually this is a progressive condition, so it's very important that we also focus on providing assistance on personal hygiene and self-care, okay? So if you know the functional concepts, the ones that I've just discussed, those are examples, you could very well become any one of these pastors, including a 60-year-old who passed the NGN at the age of, take note, senior's age of 60, okay? And all of these nurses from all around the world who are passing the NGN through our system. So the second important thing that I'd like to highlight would be your sinus bradycardia. Now, how would you know that it's sinus bradycardia? Of course, in our system, we'll teach you the three easy steps on interpreting your EKG. Now, it's very important that you save on time when you're interpreting EZG during your test because it's your primary resource, your time. So we will teach you the quick way of doing it. We have our system, remember? So to give you an overview, this is how you do it. So if you see like irregular, it, seem, it seems to be regular QRS pattern. And you have the P wave, the QRS, and this ST. Everything seems to be normal. Now pay particular attention now after taking a look at the rhythm, pay particular attention on the heart rate. And how do you do that? So you just have to, if you have a regular rhythm, you just have to count the number of large squares between two QRS complexes. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And use that to divide a constant of 300. So 300 divided by six, that gives you 50. 50 is less than the minimum heart rate of 60. Therefore, the patient is having sinus bradycardia, okay? Now, sinus bradycardia is usually associated with heart block. And in heart block, when you have bradycardia, what are the treatment that you expect? So it could be drugs to increase the heart rate, right? Atrophine sulfate or ephenipine. And of course, um, the use of temporary or permanent pacemakers. Now, the next question that you would be asking would be, so what causes bradycardia? Well, it could be associated with electrolyte imbalance that could be a complication of eating disorders like anorexia nervosa. It could also be associated with autoimmune conditions that could have triggered it like a streptococcal infection or rheumatic fever could be associated with infections like Lyme disease, okay? And of course, syndromes like sick sinus syndrome or alternating bradycardia and tachycardia syndrome, okay? Your Chagas disease, which is also known as kissing bugs, it's not Kissing's disease, okay? Kissing's disease is infectious mononucleosis. So Chagas disease is due to your kissing bugs, okay? And this is transmitted through a bug. Okay, so that's a form of an infectious condition. So it could lead to sinus bradycardia, okay, heart block, and of course, drugs like beta blockers could potentially also induce sinus bradycardia, including your uh, calcium channel blockers, lithium, and of course, depressants. Now, therefore, if the doctor orders a beta blocker, say, for example, propranolol to a client with heart block, then you may want to clarify the order because the propranolol may potentially worsen the decrease in heart rate, okay? So um, whenever you see sinus bradycardia, think about drugs that could help the patient. And these drugs are those that can increase the heart rate into a normal level, okay? So the third concept that I'd like to highlight would be, okay, the legal concept of battery. And oftentimes, this comes with um, another concept, which is assault. Now, assault, in a nutshell, is a threat. When you threaten the person that um, dinner will not be served, if they will not agree to a procedure, that's assault. Battery is causing actual harm. So it's a criminal offense 
involving unlawful physical contact. So if the patient refuses the application of restraints and you still applied it, then it could be held liable for two things. One, battery because of the unlawful physical contact because the patient's not consenting. And second would be false imprisonment because the application of restraints without the consent of the patient and the medical doctor's order is a form of limiting the patient's freedom of mobility, okay? Another example of an act that constitutes battery would be pouring a mug of hot water on someone else. So this is considered battery. However, okay, always remember that when battery is being considered, focus on the intent of the purpose or the purpose of the person who is inflicting the harm, which simply means, for example, if a shopper is pushing a cart full of groceries and it accidentally hit you, you can't sue the person for battery because it's an accident. There is no actual intention to harm you, okay? So that's an important thing that you may want to be cleared on before taking the test. Okay, so the second question would be, how are you going to study for NGN? Use technology. And part of the technology would be having the right learning resources. Here at the Ray Gapo system, we give these books for free, the nursing reminder sheets. This is good for SATA questions as it compiles all the concepts that you need to remember in acronym form or mnemonic form. And of course, my book in the US available at the Amazon, NCLEX are in a flash published by Jones and Bartlett USA, the most complete. It's a holy grail of passing the NCLEX. Why? It has the functional concepts, side notes, sample question, and rationale, plus the references. And of course, the local version of NCLEX are in a flash available here in the Philippines is NCLEX 311. You can buy it through our online shop. And of course, it contains the same things as that of your NCLEX are in a flash. The difference is it's not colored, okay? So same content. And of course, we're also giving this book for free to our NCLEX students, okay? This is Quick Fix in Pharmacology, okay? So next important thing that you have to remember when you are preparing for the NGN is to study with technology. And here at the Regapo system, we have our so-called core shells. So I asked one student, nakagamit ka ba ng core shells? Translation, were you able to use our core shells? And then she answers, yes, sir, yung online. Tingin ko yun ang pinaka nakatulong sa akin ng gusto. Uh, translation, yes, sir, that's the online. I think that was the most helpful for me. Then I asked her, bakit yun ang pinaka naka-help? Translation, why do you consider it as the most helpful? Then she answers, nababalikan ko siya and na-access anytime. Sir, tas napapractice ako ng mga pates niya. Laking bagay. Translation, I can go back to it and practice answering questions anytime. It was really a great help. Okay. And the core shell we'll talk, we are talking, I'm talking about with Lorraine Kaina in this um, messenger conversation is this. So the core shell is actually an innovation of the Ray Gapos team. Name it. It has videos, it's a humble test, NGN questions, standalone questions, short questions, long questions. And the most important thing, it's updated monthly. That sets the difference, okay? So if you want an updated online platform, use our core shells. And of course, the third requirement for the preparation to pass NGN is a conducive learning environment. Here at the Ray Gapo system, we have our own NCLEX simulation room and our class size is usually just enough, okay, to make everyone feel comfortable. So may I invite you to join us in our next generation NCLEX RN Flex, the most flexible test prep class for the NCLEX RN. Your choice of live face-to-face -face class, live virtual class, on-demand unlimited video recorded lessons, the QBank and three books, okay, plus my strategies and the fee starts at 3,499, including all these books. You get it all, including the review class for 3,499. So I'll see you in my next review class. So this is your mentor, your fact check buddy, Ray Gapus, 
joining you once again in this session and saying till our next video. Take care.